Just like we saw that quantities can be approximately linearly related, we also see that quantities can be approximately exponentially related. That is, they can have a relationship that is best described as exponential, even though the actual measured values don't exactly fit onto an exponential curve. Let's see an example of this. We know that after a medication is injected, the amount of medication in the patient's blood decreases approximately exponentially. During a clinical trial, the amount of medication in a patient's blood is measured every hour for 12 hours after injection. So our variables are going to be T, the time in hours, and M, the amount of medication in the blood. Let's say that's in milligrams. The measurements might look something like this. Now, we can figure out what P is multiplied by every time T goes up by 1. We'll just take, let's see, 162 divided by 200. That's 0.81. 128 divided by 162. That's about 0.79. 100 divided by 128. That's about 0.78. 79 divided by 100, I can do in my head. That's 0.79. 64 divided by 79. That's but 0.81. And we can, keep go we can keep going like this. We notice the ratios are not all the same, but they're pretty close. And if we look at a scatter plot of these numbers, we see that this sure looks like an exponential graph. It looks like the common ratio is about 0.8. Looking at this table, it looks like my multiplier is about 0.8. So it looks like this relationship might be approximately described by the equation. Well, P has a starting value of 200, and then we multiply it by 0.8. How many times do we do that? Once every hour. Let's see how well that equation fits the later values. Right, like here we have like a 16 and a 12. If we take 200 times 0.8 to the t is 11 here, 17 point something, yeah, that's pretty close to 16. 200 times 0.8 to the 12th, 13 point something, that's pretty close to 12. These are both a little bit too low. Let's look at this one. This one's a little too low also. Maybe my multiplier should be a little bit less than 0.8. But that gave me a pretty good approximation. We can estimate our multiplier, then, by calculating the ratios and seeing what they're all close to. This is not a real precise method, but it gives us an estimate. Of course, we can only do that if our independent variable is increasing by a constant amount each time. Unlike the linear case, we can't just take a ruler and put it down the middle to get the exponential curve of best fit because ruler's shapes aren't exponential curves, they're straight lines. In the next video, we'll see a method for getting a more precise approximation of the line of best fit by using our calculator.